Hello class! I just wanted to make this quick video in hopes of helping you find some cool data to use for your book lab number three maps. Uh, it, as I'm sure you've read above already, uh, for this lab all you have to do is make a map using the cartographic techniques that we've learned in this chapter and I, you can just use any of the data that we've had in this class already. Or you can go out and find some cool data uh, from outside sources, which is good to know because you're going to have to do this for your final project anyway. So may as well get used to using outside data now. And it's not for, for this one, I'm, it, I'm, we're going to keep it pretty simple. Uh, I've given you a link here in the assignment for Esri's Living Atlas. It's this really cool collection of data that Esri, the creators of our software, have put together. They collect it, they, they publish data themselves, they get data from businesses, governments of small and federal, uh, all kinds of places. Now, there's some data we can't use here yet. I don't want you to use anything that has a raster like this. We only want to use vector data for now. Raster data ha will happen later in the semester toward the very end. So what I suggest doing, filter this all out for layers and still rasters will show up. But also I want you to notice that on some of these data sets, they say subscriber. You don't have access to these yet. Sometime in the next week before week three goes live, you will have access to ArcGIS Online. If you're doing this lab and you've already gotten that email telling you you've been signed up, feel free, you can use the subscriber, you'll have a login. But I won't be setting that up until later this week. So for now, I recommend looking for data that doesn't have the subscriber icon here. And it looks like there's none here, but if we filter down further and figure out, okay, what would we like to show on our map? I just feel like showing some administrative boundaries of some sort. You don't really have to have a solid idea going in, like that can help and you can do a search bar up here for whatever. But you know, sometimes it's just fun to just explore what's in here. And so this data set that I found, I really like, USA Generalized Federal Lands. So if we click on the title, we get all of the metadata for this data, which is useful. Read it. Know what the heck it is you're mapping. It's very important. And for us to use it in ArcMap, notice it didn't, doesn't say subscriber anywhere, so we can use this just fine. I'm using this without actually being, well, I won't be logged into ArcMap when I open it. So we go over here to open in ArcGIS desktop and click on open in ArcMap. It's going to download a weird looking little file over here. Just open it up. Or you might have to open your file explorer to your downloads folder if they don't appear down there below. I'm using Google Chrome just for reference. And we're waiting for ArcMap to open. And keep in mind, you will want a good internet connection while trying to use data like this. Because we're not, we didn't download the data. It just downloaded a tiny, tiny little file that tells ArcMap how to find this data on the internet. And it streams it in like you would on Netflix. Instead of movies, it's map data, spatial data. And as usual, ArcMap is taking its sweet time. And we're almost there. I have too many windows open. Okay, so here we go. And so you can make a map of the United States. Um, obviously for this I would recommend adding in, uh, let's see, no, I forget which chapter we get full, uh, 
Okay, so it seems like I, I don't know where I readily have a boundary file for the, for the United States. So I'm just going to look on the Living Atlas really quick. Actually, my work is... Actually, you know what? A learning opportunity. I'm doing this on the fly. Can you tell? Um, United States Administrative Boundary GIS. Pretty much if you add in the word GIS at the end of anything, you can find the GIS data for it if it exists for free. And so the U.S. Census Bureau, by the way, great great resource for uh, finding data and we're gonna go over here to data hmm. they've changed their website since I was last here go to geographies mapping files And so the tiger line shape files are what we want. And they haven't released them for this year yet, but we can use last year's just fine. So we're going to download here. And so here we can see all kinds of stuff. So I just want states. download national file. And keep in mind it downloads it as a zip file. You will need to unzip your data. There's always a couple people every year, every semester, that don't know about that. Whoop. Don't mind my messy downloads folder. And sort by... Oh shoot. Where are we at? T. Oh, it was right there. This is how on the fly it is, guys. Not polished at all. We're going to extract all. Always make sure you know where you're extracting to. I'm lazy right now and I'm just keeping things in my download folder. So we can come over here. And. I need to connect to my download folder. Libraries. Oh, wait, you know what? I think it's on my Oh, yep, nope, that's right. So this PC downloads and this folder. Expand this out, and there's our sheet file. So let's obviously, we're going, we don't want that on top because we can't see nothing. And I don't want to use this green just because there's green in the data, so it could be confusing about what we're looking at. Look at that, how cool. So already we have a map of federal lands in the United States. And we would make a nice, nice layout for it, a title, a legend. You can see what everything means over here. Super cool. Um, also, one more tip. If you want to make a local map to where you live. So I live in Corona. So if I typed in City of Corona GIS. And then you'll see my city has a GIS web page. I have this cool little geo hub shows all their applications but when I go down here it says explore data categories so I can download my own city's data for whatever they've made available so I'm just gonna click on view all data sets like we can map out recycled water a lot of recycled water ah see there's other things here so administrative boundaries voting districts 
homeowners associations, maybe I care about those because I'm looking on where I want to move within my city. So I can download this as a shape file. There we go again with our zip folder. And I will extract all. Go into ArcMap. Gonna need to connect to that folder. You know, honestly, what I should have done in the get go, because I know I'm gonna keep downloading data and come to it, just save it, just connect to my downloads folder, and then I can access everything. Instead of reconnecting to individual folders over and over. Here it is. Add those in. And a quick little cool thing, if you haven't figured out how to do this already, you can right click on a shapefile, because obviously Corona is somewhere zo way zoomed in. We can't see this layer from out here. But we can go to right here, zoom to layer. And hey, look at that, the homeowners associations. And so maybe this isn't the greatest map. Let's try zooming out a little. You can see that there's a forest service right here based on of our legend. We could make this look like something else. Mm. Not saying this is a perfect map. You wouldn't want to use this orange because it clashes with that. But you just kind of get, I just kind of wanted you all to get my point. So we've so far here, we've gotten data from the Living Atlas, from the census, and from the city of Corona. And you could do that with a bunch of other different cities. Like say, so let's see what San Bernardino has. San Bernardino GIS data. See, they have their own GIS homepage and they have their own data layer catalog. FTB GIS downloads, that might be helpful. There's probably good stuff in there. So you kind of just have to go digging around and explore a little, which can be pretty cool. Um, you can find all kinds of stuff if you just feel like going and searching for data. Like one time when I was doing that for a final project when I was in a GIS class, I found historical census data from like the 1800s, mapped out some really cool stuff with that. So I always encourage you Go out, search out cool data. And just, it's it's really good for finding other data that you may not be familiar with and, and you have no idea what condition it's gonna be in. The data that we get for our textbooks is all pretty much in good condition. It doesn't need any cleaning up, but there's a lot of data out there. You're gonna get it and it's not gonna be pretty and you won't even know what you're looking at. And so you have to find documentation or just figure it out yourself somehow. So it's just good practice to start looking at lots of different data. So that's all for now. Uh, so I hope to see some really cool maps from you guys for chapter three and for the rest of this class. All right. Happy mapping.